I am here today to outline the defense and security elements of the government's Indo-Pacific strategy, a plan that positions Canada to take on a greater leadership role in promoting peace and stability in the region. I consistently heard great enthusiasm for Canadian leadership on the world stage as like-minded nations tackle the mounting threats to our shared rules-based international order. Stability in the Indo-Pacific is essential to global security because the region is at the center of a global shift. The region is home to India which has growing economic opportunities for Canada and deep people-to-people -people ties with our country. The region is also home to the world's most populous country, China, and Canada's relationship with China is one of the core elements of the Indo-Pacific strategy. It is no secret that China is becoming increasingly assertive as it advanced interests and values that are very different from ours. Where I go, our allies and partners say that they want to see more of Canada. Today's strategy delivers exactly that with four new defense and security initiatives backed by an investment of approximately half a billion dollars. First, Canada will increase its naval presence in the region. Under Operation Projection, Canada has been deploying two frigates on annual deployments to the Indo-Pacific. This year, we deployed HMCS Vancouver and HMCS Winnipeg, which are currently on their way back to Canada. ...through the international waters of the Taiwan Strait, our Navy then proceeded to monitor United Nations sanctions targeting North Korea under Operation Neon. These types of activities promote the rules-based international order and improve our interoperability with allied and partner forces in the region. Today, we are announcing an investment of $369.4 million to maintain and increase our naval presence in the region. In particular, we will boost our annual naval deployments with two to three frigates. This third frigate will sail from Canadian Forces Base Halifax to the region every year, boosting our presence, particularly in the Indian Ocean. Second, Canada will invest $48.7 million to increase the Canadian Armed Forces participation in joint exercises with regional allies and partners. Currently, our participation in these exercises is largely naval in focus, and this investment will enable increased opportunities for Canadian aviators and soldiers to participate in regional exercises and bolster military cooperation with countries in the region. Third, we are launching a new Canadian-led military capacity building program through which the Canadian Armed Forces will offer mentorship and expertise to partners in the Indo-Pacific. Through a commitment of $68.2 million, the Canadian Armed Forces will deliver tailored and relevant training that meets the needs of our regional partners with a focus on building the capability, interoperability, and sustainability of partner forces in Southeast Asia, such as in Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. As part of this program, Canada will lead training initiatives that focus on the women, peace, and security agenda, thereby increasing awareness of gender issues across the region informed by our work at home to build a more inclusive military. We are announcing that Canada will launch new initiatives to support regional military partners seeking to bolster their cybersecurity and cyber capabilities. Our goal will be to work with partners in the region to improve 
their ability to detect and respond to cyber threats. Our national cryptologic agency, the Communication Security Establishment, is a key part of this Indo-Pacific strategy and will contribute to enhancing our ties with the region through the Augmented Intelligence Capacity Initiative and the Cyber and Diplomacy Initiative, supported by investments of approximately $30 million. 